Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Planes and other aircraft have surprisingly long service lives. In fact, with the right maintenance and upkeep, planes can remain on the job for 50 to 60 years. Take the Lockheed C-130 Hercules, for instance. It was commissioned in 1954, but still flies missions all around the world. Of course, it doesn't always make sense to keep planes running forever. Some planes simply need to be retired after they've served their purpose. In the U.S. military, retiring a plane is a ceremonial affair, with servicemen saluting the plane on its last flight. But where do these retired planes end up? In most cases, they go to a place known affectionately as the Boneyard. This is a specified area where planes can be stored securely and salvaged for parts. Tons of great parts out here and no sense in letting them go to waste. So 90% of the stuff we pull is just as good as anything as a brand new part, it's just dirty. There's very few parts that I've pulled since I've been out here that were deemed bad. The majority of U.S. boneyards are located in the Southwest, where the air is dry and will minimize the corrosion of aircraft components. The ground we're on here uh, is, is fairly unique. It's, it's a very high calcium soil, very stable. When it's dry as it is now, it's as hard as concrete and very, very, very robust. And with the dry weather conditions here, low relative humidity year round, very low rainfall, averaging about six to eight inches a year in the region, there's nothing like uh, tornadoes or hurricanes or that type of thing here to potentially destroy assets. Davis Boneyard outside Tucson, Arizona, is the largest of its kind, boasting some 4,000 retired aircraft. However, even in this ultra-dry climate, preserving these planes for maximum use is not as easy as simply parking them and letting them cure in the sun. First, ejection seats and other hardware that might be categorized as classified needs to be removed. Yep, that's it. Yep. Next, the planes are washed with clean water to remove any environmental components that could hasten corrosion. After that, the fuel system is drained. Finally, the aircraft is sealed using a special plastic spray compound. This unique two-coat system keeps the interior of the plane cool to maximize the life of all interior components. The protective coating is known as spray lat. Over the course of one or two days, it is painstakingly applied to every exterior part of the plane. The first layer is black. 
it seals the aircraft from dust, wind, and other corrosive elements. The next layer is white and is intended to reflect the sun and reduce the chance of plane components warping or even melting due to the extreme desert heat. Of course, not all retired aircraft share the same fate. Some planes will live on as testaments to the ingenuity of military engineering. In this case, they may end up at one of the dozens of military museums spread around the United States. These facilities are designed to celebrate and preserve some of the most amazing planes in U.S. military and civilian history. In most cases, the museums attempt to capture the planes in all their glory. They will even painstakingly recreate the exterior paint job of the aircraft so that they perfectly resemble the way they looked in Vietnam, Korea, or even World War II. Then we come to our P-59. Our P-59 is one of only six surviving aircraft in the world, P-59s. They were early jets and used at the very, very end of the Second World War. And then next to that is our BT-13, which was used as a trainer during the Second World War. And though many of these planes will be permanently disabled and remain on the museum floor, some continue to fly at air shows and events around the country. His father Barney was a B-24 bomber commander in World War II. It should be noted that the restoration process is far from simple. In the case of this PT-13D cadet, specialists at the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force had to take this aircraft all the way down to the bones. In all, it took five men working for nearly a year to painstakingly rebuild this PT-13D just as it would have been constructed in the past. The goal here is to make the plane as similar as humanly possible to how it might have looked in its heyday. The uh, restoration staff has expertise and the research division staff has expertise. And some questions that come from the restoration staff are things like, how is the aircraft painted? And it's not just something simply like colors, it's things like, is it gloss, semi-gloss, or flat? Are there stencils on the aircraft? If there are stencils, what is the font? How big are they? Where are they located? So it really is a, an investigation. It's almost like being a, a private investigator, a PI, because every aer airplane is different. Ultimately, a well-maintained aircraft that doesn't suffer any severe service mishaps can remain in action for half a century or more. Two of the main fighter jets in the United States Air Force, the F-15 and the F-16, were both introduced in the 1970s. The Boeing MV-22 Osprey vertical takeoff aircraft dates back to the late 1980s. Keeping these 30- and 40-year-old planes in good working order requires constant and vigilant maintenance by highly trained crews. It's not just crew chiefs, but every shop has a part in uh, getting the jets ready to fly, whether it be avionics, e and &E, specs, uh, weapons. We got to make sure the jets are ready to fly and the pilots are safe and fulfill the mission.
After all, when it comes to avoiding the boneyard, it's all about preventing equipment failure, not just fixing it. These aircraft are the pride and joy of the U.S. military. And they have to be in the best possible shape to keep servicemen and women safe. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.